Good afternoon, good evening. My name is Jim Alatris again. Welcome back. We had a very exciting day. For those of you who are at the Nana, uh, Nano Utica site for the major jobs announcements, it's probably the most transformative things that's going to happen to this region. So a big round of applause for that uh, job announcement. County Executive Pacenti has been smiling the entire day after that announcement. You can't wipe that smile off his face, so it's great. Now I'd like to turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor, who has, actually has the most fun, uh, the, the, the best assignment today, which is talking about all the solutions, and in particular, the grants and other things that we'll be doing. So I'll turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Jim. And uh, on behalf of the Governor, I want to thank you all for coming back from this spectacular day here in the Mohawk Valley. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all the Cabinet members, again, who traveled here and were deployed all over the region. We really rely on your expertise and the knowledge that you gained today. Uh, I also want to thank some of the the unsung heroes of an event like this. It doesn't occur uh, by itself. And I want to thank the governor's team who've been on the ground and working very diligently, uh, not the least of which is Jim Alatris, but also uh, Mark Streb and his team, uh, Dolores Caruso, Reed Sims, John Kelly, uh, John Howard, a whole lot of other people. I'm sorry, the ones I didn't mention. But uh, I want you to know that we do not forget you, the regional uh, representatives, and all the hard work you do on behalf of the governor. Let's look at them. So today, before we get to the reports, I'll just tell you what I did on my field trip day. And I've been to Utica a number of times and had a chance to explore a little deeper some of the buildings that you see as you go down the main streets. And one, which was uh, particularly exciting, was our ability to announce $500,000 to go toward Utica College as they bring the business school right here downtown. That'll bring over 400 students and over 1,000 people downtown daily who'll be looking for places to shop and eat and to hang out. So uh, let the business community know there's a whole infusion of new blood coming down downtown Utica. I also went over to the Landmark, which had been a decrepit, falling down building that has seen new life like you wouldn't believe. There are 31 beautiful apartments just ready to be open. Actually, only five are left. If you want to grab one quickly, they're spectacular. And I want to thank the family of developers right there who really uh, are part of the transformation of this community. So it was, it was great to see it. We also got out to Griffiths Air Force Base and the business park to see uh, so many exciting things going on out there, one of which was the work being done at the community college, um, Mohawk Valley Community College, where they're actually training young people to do aviation mechanics. And these people are getting jobs the second they walk out of the school with a one-year degree. So I uh, got a chance to see the Oneida Airport. That was incredible. Uh, to our county executive, you've done some spectacular things here. So, uh, so I had a great day, and I am looking forward to not having my microphone turned off. Uh, uh, turning it over to, um, let's see who goes first here, my updated schedule. We are going to let Howard Zemsky take it away. Great. Thank you, Governor. Uh, great to be back this afternoon. And uh, what a, an amazing uh, an extremely memorable day uh, as as we announced uh, this extraordinary investment on the part of New York State, General Electric Power Division, and AMS, which is one of the leading internationally recognized Austrian-based uh, companies that uh, leads in sensor technology. So anytime you're at an event where literally billions of dollars are being announced in investments and literally thousands of private sector jobs. It is a memorable and extraordinary day. And I had the uh, pleasure and privilege of sitting next to Commissioner DeStito, whose eyes were not dry during the entire mm -hmm. announcement. Oh, and, yeah. and as I looked around, Honestly, there were other misty-eyed folks in the room. That's how extraordinary the announcement was. And it reminds us that economic development is way more than numbers or progress reports. It's about people. It's about community. It's about aspirations. It's about the satisfaction that comes with keeping your children in town and attracting them back. And that's what that room was all about. It was about aspiration, uh, and it was about you know amazing energy and commitment that we always see from this governor across upstate and across the state. So 
It was a tremendous pleasure, and it was an extraordinary day, the most memorable day perhaps I've had in six months here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Howard, and uh, thank you for that reminder of how Governor Cuomo's belief in upstate New York is becoming uh, realized every day, particularly here in Utica. And I, I got to just hand it to the Daily Sentinel. How did you get this picture out so fast? This is amazing. Already front page news in the local paper. I mean, this is as uh, fast as you can get it online. So I know there's a lot of excitement here about the announcement. So thank you, Howard. Uh, speaking of Roanne Destita, we'd love to hear right now from our Commissioner of Office of General Services. Thank you, Governor. Um, I don't know about all of you, but I had a great day, and thank you for such a productive day here in Utica to all of my colleagues and to Governor Cuomo and Governor Hochul. Thank you very much. Communities in the Mohawk Valley region, especially along the Mohawk River, know all too well the dangers of extreme weather and how important it is to prepare for weather-related emergencies. I'm pleased to announce that the state will purchase approximately 1,130 acres of land in Oriskany from the county of Oneida. The land, which already houses the Emergency Operations Center and state police, will help coordinate the state and local response to get critical equipment and supplies quickly to the communities in need of assistance. The state will pay $10 million for the land, and the purchase will be finalized this early fall. The state-of-the-art training center continues to play an important role in Governor Cuomo's disaster preparedness training, and this purchase will ensure that we continue to offer our first responders the best in training possible. We are looking forward to continuing our partnership with the Mohawk Valley region, especially with this important role in keeping the entire state prepared. And John Melville, our partner, um, will turn that land over to him, and um, the Department of Homeland Security will develop it um, to its best. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. The governor and I have been out to that facility, and I have to tell you, it is the envy of other states, what we've already done. And this announcement today is just going to really take it to a new level, so thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce Executive De Deputy Director, or Deputy Commissioner of Homes and Community Renewal, Ruth Ann Visnowskis. And uh, Ruth Ann? Yep, I'm here. Oh, okay. Thank you, Governor. Uh, my colleagues and I from HCR uh, had a wonderful day here in the Mohawk Valley. We met this morning with some partners and community leaders to talk about the challenges and opportunities that face small cities and communities in the Mohawk Valley as they work to uh, revitalize neighborhoods and create and preserve affordable housing. In the afternoon, I was fortunate enough to take a walking tour with Mayor Palmieri of the Corn Hill neighborhood. Uh, this neighborhood is undergoing revitalization, and we got a firsthand look at both the work that's been done and also a lot of the uh, potential future opportunities. Uh, in response to what we've seen and heard today, I have three exciting announcements uh, that will assist the Mohawk Valley uh, in creating new affordable housing and community development. So. The first uh, is that we're going to conduct a uh, what's called a boot camp for our New York Main Street program. This will be a full-day conference to help the region embrace opportunities uh, and address the issues that face the main streets and the commercial districts. Uh, the second is a $250,000 affordable housing corporation grant that's going to go to the Gloversville Housing and Neighborhood Improvement Corporation. This will uh, fund 30 units of affordable housing in Gloversville. And last but not least, we have a $2 million award for a project called the Roosevelt Residences, which is right here in Utica in the Cornhill neighborhood, which we walked through this afternoon. Uh, we're joined today by the developer, Rick Higgins, who's going to undertake that project that's going to construct 50 new affordable housing units uh, and also create uh, construction jobs. So thank you again for the opportunity. Everyone at HCR is thrilled to be part of the governor's efforts to support the Mohawk Valley. Thank you. Thank you for giving us more good news. And at this point, I'd like to introduce the President and CEO of the New York Power Authority, uh, Gil Quinones. Thank you very much, uh, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, New York has a re rich legacy in the invention of the modern electric grid. The first power plant was built in Lower Manhattan by Thomas Edison, and the first transmission of electricity occurred from Niagara Falls to Buffalo by Nikolai Tesla. Under Governor Cuomo's energy highway blueprint and reforming the energy vision, we are reimagining the current electric grid into the grid of the future, one that is smarter, cleaner, safer, more resilient, and more affordable for all New Yorkers. To make that vision a reality, we need to educate, 
the utility workforce of the future. Now, upstate New York is rapidly changing into a high-tech, clean energy economy. We must continue to develop a talented workforce that can support its growth. In addition to our growing need, 35% of utility workers in the state are eligible for retirement in the next five to 10 years. That's approximately 12,000 workers. I, along with Chair Zibelman of the PSC and President Rhodes of NYSERDA, toured Herkimer College earlier today with President Dr. Dr. Kathleen McColgan and the uh, chair of their Board of Trustees, Isabella Crandall, who are both with us this afternoon. The college has tremendous talent in its body and top-notch facilities that can help us create the next generation of energy employees. That is why I am just so thrilled to announce a new partnership with Herkimer College that can help achieve these goals. Today, we are announcing that the New York Power Authority is granting $1 million to start a workforce development program to train 21st century energy professionals at Herkimer County Community College. The program will result in the development of new energy-related curriculum and co-op opportunities for local students, as well as NIPA employees at our Clark Energy Center, just a few miles from here in Marcy. That is the hub of, and control center of our transmission system. By the way, I was also told that Herkimer College will be installing a two megawatt solar array in their campus. As far as I know, that will be the largest installation in any college or university setting in our state. So, all in all, our investment will ensure that this region's professionals are prepared to work in the Mohawk Valley region of today and tomorrow. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. At this point, I'd like to introduce Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Matt Driscoll. Well, thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I think it's, uh, we can all agree it's been a tremendous day here in Utica. You know, Capital for a Day is all about identifying locally driven uh, opportunities to enhance the Mohawk Valley and responding to the needs of this community, and we're doing just that. This morning, I attended a ribbon cutting ceremony for a pedestrian bridge and park at the North-South Arterial Construction Project. The new bridge has reconnected West Utica neighborhoods with downtown, and it's improving safety for bicycles and pedestrian users as well. The Arterial Project is a $66.5 million job. It's the largest construction, highway construction project in this region, and it's creating jobs, improving mobility, and supporting Utica's economic resurgence. Today, we're announcing a new project in the works for Utica, a need which has been identified by the community here. Preliminary design is underway for safety improvements to a section of Route 5S in Utica. The new project will improve access to the Bag Square neighborhood, enhancing safety uh, for bicyclists and pedestrians there as well. I'm pleased to announce the state will provide $9 million to enable this project to move forward. After some additional public outreach and input uh, and detailed design, we'll put it out to bid and get started in 2017. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Let me ask our Acting Commissioner of Department of Environmental Conservation, Mark Gersman, to uh, give his conclusions for today. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Supervisor Frank Spado for hosting the event in the town of German Flats Community Center. It's a great project they have going there, and wish them all the best in getting it uh, done. We also enjoyed a great lunch of Utica Greens, um, which may be my highlight for the day. Um, as you know, New York State has recently endured some of the most severe weather events in its history, and the Mohawk Valley is no exception. Unfortunately, current projections for New York State and the Mohawk Valley indicate that severe weather events will become more and more frequent, and the intensity of the storms will greatly increase. The devastating flood events that took place in June and July 2013 in many of the areas of the Mohawk Valley uh, far exceeded the 100-year storm event, and in some cases surpassed even the 500-year storm event. The massive flood, as you know, caused extensive damage stretching from Oneida to Herkimer to Montgomery counties. Many bridges were washed out, cutting off emergency service and access to folks in need. Today we met with many of the communities and the folks who were impacted by those floods. 
as all, you, all of you know, the governor has placed the highest priority on ensuring New York State is proactively taking steps to address and mitigate uh, flooding, particularly within the Mohawk Valley watershed. Today, I am thrilled to announce that the state will fund $8.1 million to support two dozen resiliency projects in Oneida, Herkimer, and Montgomery County. Additionally, after the 2013 flood, the state retained Malone and McBroom uh, consultants to do scientifically based watershed-wide studies for 13 streams to identify causes uh, and solutions to flooding in those areas. Today, we are funding $1.3 million in solutions that were identified in those studies for four projects in Herkimer County, one in Oneida County on the Oriskany Creek for a total of $9.4 million in resiliency projects announcing today. I would also like to thank my colleague, Secretary of State Cesar Parales and his team for working with us on bringing the important solutions to these flooding problems to the communities in the Mohawk Valley. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that great news, Commissioner. At this time, I'll let, give a report, have a report from our Commissioner of Agriculture and Markets, Richard Ball. Thank you so much, Governor. It's really great to be here today. It's really great to see the notion of agriculture as economic development uh, be understood in our state. So really great day. Had a great time, cap for a day. What a marvelous idea. The Mohawk Valley actually built its character on the agricultural industry, and today it remains, if you take an honest assessment, one of our most prized assets. And today we had an opportunity to meet with our Mohawk Valley regional partners, receiving valuable feedback on how we can build on our success and grow the agricultural industry. One of the opportunities we identified is to promote what makes this region so special. And I'm proud to announce a special partnership with my friend and colleague next to me, the director of the State Canals Corporation, Brian Stratton. Together with Canals and with the Thruway Authority, Ag and Markets will create a new Taste New York store and vending machines at the Lock E13 Living History Rest Area in Montgomery County, which is set to open this fall. This Taste store will join dozens of similar Taste New York stores across the state, including one very successful at Grand Central Station, another one very successful at Tide Hill on the Taconic Parkway, and in many of the Thruway Rest Areas. Taste New York is just a great way to connect the dots between our grower community and our consumers, and right here for our local farmers. This $7.2 million investment by the Thruway Authority will help connect New York's original Main Street, the Erie Canal, with the Main Street of today, the New York State Thruway. This is only some of what we're accomplishing today, and it's only some of what we heard about today, but I'm really excited to continue this work in the months and years to come. So thank you. <clears throat> Great news, Commissioner. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Commissioner of the Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services, Arlene Gonzalez-Sanchez. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And first and foremost, uh, thank you to you and the Governor for this great idea for Capital for a Day. I think it, it's really a, a really great idea and it gives us a chance to really meet with folks and hear firsthand of what the issues are. So thank you again. So as you may know, heroin use has skyrocketed into a national crisis over the last several years. In New York, we are really combating the issue with everything we've got. Um, last year, Governor Cuomo established a combat heroin initiative. Part of this includes naloxone trainings throughout the state, which by the, we actually did one this afternoon, so we trained an additional 30 people right here in the Mohawk Valley. And, um, and so I'm, I'm really happy to announce that today we have two key enhancements to fight against heroin. First, we're announcing a new $1 million opioid treatment program to assist people with addiction. This is the first ever treatment program in the Mohawk Valley, which means that people can receive treatment here closer to home without having to travel an hour, an hour and a half to get treatment. Uh, the clinic will be located at the New York State um, McPike Addiction Treatment Center, and we are aiming to open this new clinic later on this year. 
The second, to further strengthen our efforts, today we're announcing a dedicated expert in hospital emergency departments in the Mohawk Valley to help connect people with treatment. When a person who has overdose enters the emergency room and is treated, the next important step is to make sure that they get the long-term help that they need to fight their addiction. So we're, we're hoping that this will close that gap. So we are really dedicated to ensuring that all New Yorkers get the help that they need. And today, under the leadership of Governor Cuomo, and with the help of our local partners, the Mohawk Valley has more care than it ever has had with respect to addiction. And we stand together to help the Mohawk Valley in the future. Thank you. Thank you. That's great news, Commissioner. Thank you very much. And uh, now we'll hear from the Department of Labor, Commissioner Mario Mussolino. Thank you, Bert. Thank you very much, Governor. Um, the, our activities today for uh, part of Capital for a Day was really an extension of something that, that began yesterday uh, when Commissioner Ball from the Department of Agriculture and Markets organized a farm tour for myself and Commissioner Zucker from the Department of Health um, in a conversation with some of the uh, growers to talk about issues that the agricultural community is facing. And I'm happy to be able to announce today that we are going to be aligning our agencies to help agricultural employers better understand and comply with the law in regards to farm worker housing as well as um, various regulations such as wage deductions. Specifically, the Department of Labor and the Department of Health have agreed to sign a memorandum of understanding that is going to streamline the inspection process for farm worker housing and adding clarity for uh, growers around the state. By streamlining this, we know that we're going to accomplish a couple of different goals. We're going to ultimately protect farm workers, as well as making sure that we can promote the agricultural sector here in the Mohawk Valley and across the state. And in addition to the memorandum of understanding that we're signing today, we heard um, in our discussions yesterday, as well as in the roundtable discussion we held today at SUNY Cobble Skill, um, issues and actually confusion among some of the farmers about the various regulations that are out there. So the Department of Labor will be um, holding a series of webinars starting this month that will be available to the farm community. We'll do them as webinars. We'll also go out and do them as in-person presentations uh, to provide the farm community with all the specific information they need uh, regarding compliance issues with respect to wage deductions and other, uh, other laws. We're very excited to have started this partnership. We're going to be engaging uh, uh, agriculture labor advisory group as we move forward so that we continue to build on this uh, partnership now and into, into the future. Thank you, Commissioner. That's very good news for the Agricultural Committee. At this point, we'll conclude our announcements from our cabinet and turn it over to our local officials who are wonderful hosts for us here today in the Mohawk Valley. Uh, I'll start with City of Rome Mayor Joe Fusco, who uh, joined me on a number of my visits, particularly out to the uh, Griffiths Air Force Base, and thank you very much for your hospitality. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, that was a wonderful afternoon. We had the opportunity to show you a lot of what's going on in the uh, Tech Park area, as well as explain uh, some of the uh, Things that we've been doing in preparation for this very day. Um, this is an exciting. Uh, this is a generational uh, change today because it has it has the effect on our children and our children's children going forward. As we uh, as we watch and see something that uh, some folks uh, and I'd like to say uh, on behalf of of the city of Rome, we're very very thankful to the governor for keeping. Uh, upstate New York and the Mohawk Valley uh, in his eyes, uh, realizing our potential and seeing the, uh, as he mentioned today, all the wonderful assets that we have here in the, uh, to, uh, to offer, and as well as uh, Steve DeMio and his team at EDGE for their uh, relentless uh, chase of this, uh, of this project, and uh, also to, uh, just to highlight the fact that uh, this, again, this is, this is 
our generation's chance to, uh, it's, it's our industrial revolution, it's our Erie Canal, it's our opportunity to uh, take our community to the next level and rebuild some of the, uh, some of the things we've lost over the years. But uh, we're extremely, again, extremely thankful to the, uh, to the governor for keeping upstate New York on the map. Thank you. Thank you. City of Utica Mayor Robert Palmieri. I was told to keep it short, and it's going to be very difficult to keep what a great, wonderful day this has been very short. Um, as the governor has stated, uh, this is a revolutionary change for, for the greater Utica area and the region. And I have to go on record as saying to the governor and lieutenant governor and the cabinet members, um, you have done a remarkable job of making upstate New York, Utica, New York, feel as if it's part of the overall geographic area of New York. That hasn't been done for many years. And what has happened today is a transformation that I in my lifetime have not seen. The people of this region have hope, and that hope was brought today. And I can't express how happy I am not only for myself and my city, but for all the people who have put in this blood, sweat, and tears for all these years, and today is a day that we celebrate, and we celebrate as one, one region in a transformation. I hope that your day in Utica, New York, members of the cabinet and whoever came in was equally as rewarding and refreshing and as welcoming as to everyone that you have brought to this great region. I can't express as a mayor of a city that has gone through some very difficult times to know at this point we are at the cusp of a revolutionary change in the greater Utica area that will never ever be undertaken at the level that it is at this point. As we see and said, welcome home GE, welcome home New York State, welcome home Utica, New York. Thank you so much. Now we'll hear from our county executive, Anthony Pacetti, here in Oneida. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and thanks uh, again to the governor for a great day. As, uh, as was said by Jim, I, I'm probably not going to stop smiling. I'm probably not going to sleep for a week either because this has been such an exciting day. <laughs> and uh, again, thanks to the governor uh, for the announcements today. Thanks to the cabinet members, because I'm writing down all of these things that you are bringing uh, to this region and uh, looking at the work that we have to do, and, and we're going to keep going. We're going to keep moving forward. Today was a day about, uh, as, as my colleagues have said and as the lieutenant governor uh, said, is about transformation. It's about moving forward. It's about looking at the new economy that is the Mohawk Valley and is Utica and Oneida County and Rome and Montgomery and, and Fulton, Schoharie, Otsego and uh, Herkimer. Uh, that is our region and our region is growing and our region is strong and our region is unified. And today solidifies that. Today, uh, the partnership with New York State could never be even ever stronger. Uh, thanks to all of the commissioners, each and every one of you who devoted your time throughout this region and brought us such great news and, and who we work with each and every day. It, in my 34 years in government, this is probably, and without a doubt, uh, the most productive, most exciting day uh, that I've spent in government and proud to be in government when I sit around people like all of you. And with all of the people that are out there, all of my partners in, in this community, the educational aspects, the business leaders, the chambers, the, the, uh, the various groups, and, and everybody we have the ability to work with each and every day. Thank you for believing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for trusting and, and being a part of what is uh, the greatest part of our day, too, today as we recap this, but also is the greatest part of what this region is going to see in the days to come. And now it's on to the MV500, and let's win that one. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assembly member Anthony Brindisi. 
Well, thank you, Governor. It's, it certainly feels like uh, Christmas came early here for the Mohawk Valley uh, with the announcement this afternoon and all these great announcements that are being made uh, right now. Um, I also want to say uh, thank you to Governor Cuomo. The governor has set out a very bold agenda for upstate New York and focusing on revitalizing uh, areas like Utica and Rome, and he has put us on, on the right path today to making that a reality. I want to thank the Lieutenant Governor, who's uh, a constant friend to our area uh, and has been here many times and supports us. In, in many efforts. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and to the Cabinet. Uh, it's great to put uh, uh, names with some of the fa faces with some of the names that you talked to over the phone, and thank you for the help that you provide my office on a constant basis for dealing with uh, constituents in our region. There's a couple takeaways for me today. Um, first, I think uh, the message is, is teamwork. The team really starts at the top with the governor, and the lieutenant governor flows down through the cabinet, and then here locally uh, through the elected officials and our folks in economic development. We have great partners here on the, team, on, on the ground floor, uh, and my colleague, Senator Griffo, my uh, colleague, the county executive, the mayors. Uh, we have a great team here that works very well together. Uh, the second message for me is that we have a lot of work to do, uh, and this is not a time to sit back and, and rest on our laurels. We've had some great announcements today, uh, but there's a lot more that has to be done in terms of readying our workforce, our housing, uh, our transportation needs. These are the folks that can help us make that happen, and we should be using them as a resource, and we will going forward. So thank you to all of you who are here today and for being a part of this announcement. Thank you to Commissioner Destito, my friend. Uh, we're ready to get to work, uh, and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. And Senator Joseph Griffo, thank you again for joining us on the tours, as Assemblyman Grandizzi did. Appreciate hearing from you now. Lieutenant Governor, thank you. I uh, enjoyed uh, riding with you and uh, touring some of the uh, great assets that uh, this region has to offer. I want to commend uh, the governor as we begin, because this is a great concept. Uh, he has had undertaken a number of initiatives, but capital for a day in bringing the cabinet to the community and engaging with uh, the entire region, I think, is a, an exceptional experience. So I commend you and the governor for uh, instituting such an initiative. I also want to uh, tell the members of the cabinet who are assembled here today, because we have an opportunity to work with you on a regular basis, that uh, I uh, respect your talent. All of you bring some unique talents uh, to your respective positions. And we do not only respect your talent, but appreciate your hard work and your efforts. These are challenging times, and it's not easy. So I want to congratulate and commend you for your service to the state of New York and for your willingness to travel and to interact with communities. That is so important. And I hope that, and I know it has been as productive and hopefully as uh, uh, beneficial to all of you as it is to the communities in which you attend and visit. Uh, this has been uh, an extraordinary day, uh, as you heard, an exhilarating uh, message today with uh, such positive news. And it does come because a lot of people worked hard for a long time, that we continue to work together as a team. We continue to believe in ourselves and our region. And as a result of that, we can accomplish good things. So I want to thank the governor and his team again for their support, for their leadership, for their vision. All of that is what we need to continue to make our efforts to be successful uh, as we move forward. So many people involved in so many different ways. Just thank you so much for continuing to believe in our community. This was a new day. Now it is up to us to seize that day. So thank you again, Lieutenant Governor, thank and thank, to, thank you to all the members of the Cabinet for being here today. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. And, uh, before I turn it over to uh, Jim Relatris to wrap up this day and uh, finally get that beer you've been waiting for and talk about all day, I, I do want to just mention that you know, there are a lot of deputy secretaries as well here uh, who support our cabinet and work closely with us. But when you think about that significant uh, game changer, that sea change announcement this morning, uh, I also just want to give a shout out to Andrew Kennedy, who's been marshalling this project through for a long time. His entire team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, again, Uh, there's just so many other people that help us, who make us look good. And, and the, cab, the second floor is full of them. And I, I think about Joe Rubito and Caroline Griffin for being here today. Matt Pinello, locally, you always take good care of us when we come to town. And uh, my own team, my chief of staff, Jeff Perlman and Jason Elan are here. There's just, I, you really, I've only been on the job a fairly short time myself, but the caliber of the people that the governor has surrounded himself with is really a testament to his belief in excellence. 
And everyone here exudes that in so many different ways. And as a citizen of the state, we are beneficiaries of this. So, uh, so that's just, I, I, know, I, want, I don't think we can ever thank our staff enough for what they do each and every day. So uh, and with that, I will turn it over to the governor's director of state operations, Jim Malatris. Thank you, LG. I'm looking forward to that Destito Club that we renamed from Utica Club. Uh, what you heard was just a few of the things that we worked together with our local partners on today, but in all, we're presenting a 31-point plan for the Mohawk Valley region. So on behalf of the governor, the lieutenant governor, the entire cabinet, and the staff of the governor's office, uh, we thank you. A 31-point plan took a lot of work, but I think it's worth it. It's going to mean a lot to your community, and it means a lot to us because government service is why we're here. Now to the important part. We'd like you all now to join us at the Munson Williams Proctor Art Institute on 310 Genesee Street for a reception. There we hope to talk some more. And until then, thank you very much.